Oh, goody. All right. What's going on, everybody? Zombies here again. And today we're back with another Marvel Snap video. So today we're going to talk about balance. And uh, this is something I've been talking about a lot, basically, for the last what, maybe five months now, uh, ever since September. Uh, and it's something that's come up on stream multiple times, but I don't think I've ever made like a dedicated video about it. And we got a response today that I think is the absolute perfect example of what I talk about when I bring up the issues of balance in Marvel Snap uh, and why it really hasn't been feeling great. So what are the issues with balance in Marvel Snap? Whenever there's a power outlier or an experience people aren't really enjoying, uh, I often tell people the same thing. And it's that, you know, balance and snap used to frustrate me way more than it does now. And while I still don't like some of these decisions made, a lot of people are often confused at why they make certain balancing decisions that just don't seem like they make sense. And something I've come to realize in my time with the game, especially in the last few months, is that the decisions they make make a lot more sense when you understand the philosophy they're using. And it's not a philosophy I agree with, I think it is actually actively bad for the game, uh, but I think there's no denying it's a philosophy they've embraced, and I think this post is a really good example of it. What that philosophy is, is Marvel Snap prioritizes making things different rather than prioritizing making a balanced experience. And to be clear, these are things that can coexist. Of course you want the game to be different. This isn't saying the goal of making the experience differ from month to month is a bad thing. No, you wanna make new cards, you want the experience to be different so people don't get sick of it. That goal in and of itself is not a problem. The problem is that that goal is the number one priority to the point where balance seems to fall by the wayside. As long as the experience is different, they're very willing to turn a blind eye to blatantly overpowered and unbalanced strategies if that accomplishes the goal of making an experience that is different than the one that came before it. And I really think this became the most brazenly obvious at the start of September with the Loki season and how we kind of saw the dev reaction to people's very justified complaints about how, hey, 3-5 Loki is one of the most broken cards that has ever been made in the game. What are your plans to address this card? And uh, they really didn't do much to address it for quite some time outside of slapping two power off the collector for a little bit. So the question we have here is, as far as I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, the purpose of the second dinner team this season was to revive Shuri-like decks. So big stuff. Uh, where you just put ultra big numbers on locations and win. Is that true? And what's your personal attitude towards such gameplay? I know some people, especially new ones, may like such gameplay, but for older snappers who play a quite a long time, this feels a little bit too primitive and boring. What do you think? And the response we have here, for Planet Hulk season, we are deliberately seeking to create gameplay worthy of the angry green giant, not puny banter. We like to keep the metagames on the move. So this is pretty transparent. It's like, yeah, the theme of the season is big idiot stuff, and we're going to push that theme. And again, that would probably be fine if it didn't feel like that theme, that pushed objective, uh, is just head and shoulders above the vast majority of the competition right now. It's fine to want to make a theme or a mechanic or new cards strong and impact the meta. I mean, most players want cards to make an impact. Uh, they don't want cards that don't do anything, as we've seen in the past. And of course, it's not the easiest thing in the world to always create a card that is balanced. Some cards will be too weak, some cards will be too strong. I think people are a lot more forgiving of accidentally releasing a card in not the perfect state, especially when it can be rebalanced. But the thing is that rebalancing doesn't happen as much or especially not as quickly when the number one priority is that, hey, we want big stuff to succeed. So we're going to look the other way and not adjust it until, well, it's another month, another season. This theme has had its time in the sun and it's time to move on to another one. Loki was kind of the perfect example of this, creating one of the most toxic cards and metagames I've ever seen in any card game uh, during its release season. It was crazy how imbalanced it was, uh, but when that was brought up, they seemed to view Loki as a win because he felt flavorful and because it changed the metagame where tech cards got worse, mid-rangey stats decks got worse, and decks that had been previously pretty bad like Cerebro 3 and Phoenix Force 
suddenly had a niche at attempting to combat Loki. Now, if we look at the past few seasons for the last five or so months, the vast majority of them have been very dominated by that theme of the season, most of the time which has been the powerful season pass cards. Loki completely dominated during the September season. He also dominated in October, but a big part of his dominance was actually Elsa. Launch Elsa was actually stronger than Loki in a lot of ways, and even though they eventually found a home in the same deck, it was more a Elsa deck with Loki included than a Loki-focused deck. That's just how powerful she was. That was followed up by Miss Marvel, another incredibly powerful season pass card that completely dominated and shaped the metagame around it. Sebastian Shaw is really the only outlier here. The theme of that season seemed to be buffing up and debuffing stuff uh, with cards like Blob that got really big off of buffs from eating your deck, Celine debuffing your and your opponent's cards, and Havoc who was gaining buffed power based off of a restriction. And I think a big part of the reason why that season didn't really succeed was just because the other seasons and themes were so pushed that even after some of those cards and decks had been nerfed, uh, the power disparity was just too high between the vast majority of the cards releasing in the Sebastian Shaw season outside of the Blob. And Blob's a really big dude, and it's the really big dude season, uh, so it is unsurprising that Blob continues to dominate. And as much as that card needs some kind of balance adjustment as getting a 630 to 650 doesn't exactly feel like the most fun and interactive gameplay, I don't have a huge amount of confidence they're going to rush to rein the card in because it fits the theme of the season. And so they're happy to kind of turn a blind eye or treat it with kid gloves until it's time for the next new season theme in February, which happens to be Thanos, by the way. Uh, so who knows if it even gets that much of a nudge because it is by far succeeding the most in the Thanos deck. And the economy is also an aspect that plays into these problems. I think there would be less problems had with this philosophy if players were simply able to say, hey, I don't really like the theme of the season. I'm going to bow out for this one and maybe I'll come back next season. I still don't think it would be a great balance philosophy overall, but you could at least pick and choose when to engage with the game in terms of the times when you actually felt like it was more fun. The problem is the economy stops this, because if you hop off the treadmill of Marvel Snap, you fall behind and you are not going to be able to have the resources to engage with the new content in the following seasons if you don't keep playing the game during the seasons where you don't really like how it feels. And that creates a lot of tension in the player base and especially frustrations about balancing in the game. Now there's always going to be a best deck. I think some people often confuse what I'm saying in this video as, well, you can't be mad about this because there's always going to be a best deck, no matter how they balance stuff. And it's not about there being a best deck or not. I agree, there will always be a best deck. In the vast majority of metagames, there is always going to be a best deck that is slightly better uh, or a lot better than the other decks. The issue comes from the fact when there is such a huge disparity between the decks that are tier one, or in this case with Thanos, probably tier S and a tier of its own, uh, and the difference between that and the decks below it in, let's say, tier one or tier two. When the disparity is so large and it feels like decks in just one tier below it have a really tough time competing, it creates a very polarizing experience that's not a lot of fun. It also creates a ton more mirror matches, which in general, I find most people don't love mirror matches in card games because it cuts down on the variety of your experiences in the game and it puts a higher emphasis on RNG. Since if both players are operating under the same strategy, it really feels like draw RNG determines the game a lot more than the decisions you're making. But yeah, to me, it really does feel like they kind of just have thrown up their hands and given up on trying to find a actual reasonable balance uh, for the game from season to season. And I think part of that is because when they test these seasons further in advance, there's no way their testing environment is anywhere close to what we end up having on the live game because they test these cards and make these cards so far in advance, as most normal card games do. But with how active balance is done in Snap, when changes can be made very drastically that completely alter the context of what a card was designed around or the metagame it was designed in, you have outcomes that are just not easy to predict. A great example of this is maybe when they tested out the Thanos Lockjaw, Thanos Blob stuff, Maybe it didn't feel quite as crazy when people had access to pre-nerf Loki, pre-nerf Elsa. Maybe those other overpowered decks 
helped keep this overpowered deck in check. And with those decks having been significantly nerfed, maybe this deck is far more powerful than they expected it to be when it was being tested. But that's not really a great excuse. If anything, it just shows that they should be more willing to actively approach balance and fix these issues. But the trend just seems to continue that as long as the overpowered thing is in line with, you know, whatever's going on in that seasonal theme, it either gets ignored or it gets treated very, very lightly until it is time for a new seasonal theme to come in. And that is often when the heavier nerf back comes out. So yeah, I don't like this philosophy. I think that you should generally strive to make a game where multiple things have a reasonable ability to compete and especially in the last five or so months of marvel snap it feels like the disparity between the decks that are fitting with the season theme and that are more powerful than everything else are more powerful by a very wide margin and the priority is not given to actually making those decks a bit more in line at least when that season is the current theme they are pushing and I think this is an issue that does push people away from the game, especially so when it is happening to a free to play player or a person who maybe doesn't buy every season pass and the decks and themes that are dominating revolve around that season pass card for the month. It can give off this feeling of, oh, I'm paying $10 a month to do the best thing possible. And even if you have access to it, you know, maybe people don't enjoy that particular strategy or maybe people just want to play their favorite deck they've enjoyed for a long time in the past. And Snap just really feels punishing to, to players who want to in, be able to enjoy a variety of decks, don't want to feel shoehorned into playing whatever the pushed theme of the month is. So yeah, that is, I think, the biggest issue with balance in Marvel Snap. I would like to see it change. I don't think with this and other responses we've gotten in the past, I don't think it's going to change. I think their priority is going to remain making things different rather than making things balanced. And I think the only way it actually does change is if you start seeing people move away from the game because eventually people start to really not enjoy the game being so frequently unbalanced and just move on to something else when they feel like the same cycle is just going to continue to repeat itself. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. But hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.